This is Sports Center. Let us begin, however, top of the hour. The NBA returns tonight from the break. Lakers Warriors go at it. Two teams sitting ninth and 10th in the West, respectively. But according to ESPN Analytics, the Warriors have a 63% chance to make the postseason. Lakers sit at 44%. One key factor for those playoff chances will be LeBron's availability. He's out tonight. He's nursing the ankle. Lakers 4-3 and three in games without him this season. And for the Warriors, they're going to look to ride the success over the last 10 games in the second half of the season. 8-2 and two in that span, averaging almost 125 points per game. They're an intriguing story, as they always are. Warriors reporter Kendra Andrews joins us now. And, and Kendra, everybody talking about Klay Thompson. I want to know what the head coach, Steve Kerr, is saying about his role going forward. Yeah, Matt, well, Clay's role coming off the bench is one that he's going to have, at least for the time being, moving forward. And Steve Kerr told me yesterday, look, it has less to do with Clay's individual inconsistencies or struggles so far this season, and really more to do with the Warriors team struggles as a whole. Kerr has been tinkering with his starting five, his combinations, his lineups all season long, just trying to find something that works. And he feels that right now he does have a group that works. The way that Brandon Pajemski plays, he said, the way he crashes the boards, draws charges, better compliments Jonathan Kaminga and Andrew Wiggins helps unlock that group that, of course, is rounded out by Stephen Curry and Draymond Green. And so Steve wants to stick with that. But he did acknowledge, look, this is by no means going to be easy for Clay, who has started his entire career. But Kerr likened this situation to that of Andre Iguodala, who took a sixth man role in his first season with the Warriors. And Kerr said, look how that ended up. The Warriors won the championship that season and Iguodala won finals MVP. That really set the standard of sacrifice within this organization. And right now, everyone has to sacrifice to get the Warriors where they want to be. There are five games right now outside of that five five slash six seed and the Warriors feel that they could really make a push to get out of the play in and into the playoffs where they feel Brandon Pajemski said we can be anyone in a best of seven series. The Warriors also feel that moving Clay to the bench is going to bolster that second unit. You have Clay as a sixth man and then you also have the impending return of Chris Paul. You guys he is out tonight against the Lakers but he was a full participant in practice yesterday including five on five and Kerr said the next really big hurdle and really the final hurdle to get him back out on the court is just the training staff evaluating his conditioning, making sure everyone feels comfortable with him returning to game action. You saw him in the standings. They sit 10th. You wonder what any kind of boost can give the Warriors to go on a run in the back half of this season. Kendra Andrews with the latest in the Warriors. Kendra, thank you. NBA analyst Tim Legler joins us now and legs Clay Thompson came off the bench for the first time since his rookie season to score 35 against the Jazz last week when we saw them in action. How do you view this role for Clay going forward? I think they're going to take this as sort of a small sample size and see how it goes. If Klay Thompson is receptive to it and embraces it, which he did, and I gave him a lot of credit for that because I can't overstate how difficult that is for a player of Klay Thompson's caliber to accept that and embrace it and go in with the right mindset. He obviously did that in the game against Utah, and he admitted that. It worked. It unleashed him. And I think the difference for Klay is this. When you are a starter and you're struggling – you know, you're torn between trying to get yourself going at the start of the game and also finding that flow collectively for your team. When you're coming off the bench, it's a different mentality. It's come in and get cooking. You know what you're out there to do and why you just entered the game. And I think that helped Clay. He's thinking less in that role. Now, will this be something they stay with? Well, I think a lot of that's going to depend on how he's playing and is the team winning. And if that's the case, you might see the Golden State Warriors employ this the rest of the season. I think Brandon Pajemski gives them a great option as a starter. He allows this to take place because of the way he has played. And so everybody's happy right now, but it's a one-game sample size. Let's see how they continue this out of the break. Yeah, I mean, Clay hasn't looked like this since we said his rookie season over a decade ago. Statistically, just hasn't been great. Whatever it takes, I think, at this point for the Warriors to get on track. Meanwhile, Lakers, they've won six out of their last seven games heading into the All-Star break. What's it going to be in terms of the key for L.A. to make a run here in the second half of the season? Consistency. Consistency against good teams. I look at their schedule, and this is a very important stretch for them. So over the next ten games, they play seven teams that are ahead of them in the Western Conference standings. So here's your chance. You want to make a case that you're going to make things very interesting later in the year? This is your chance to do that. Oh, by the way, in that 10 games, they also have a game against Milwaukee. So you've got eight teams ahead of them in the standings that they're going to get here over the next three weeks. And I want to see how they consistently bring an approach that shows you that 
they're now serious because I don't think the regular season is that relevant to the Lakers. They've always been a team that since they put this together, that's, hey, let's just be healthy when the right time comes in mid-April and we'll make a run. That's not going to happen this year in the West, I don't believe. It's just too many minefields. So you've got to position yourself to be in a favorable spot to make that run and you can help yourself here over the next three weeks. So I want to see how they play against teams that are ahead of them in the Western Conference. Yeah, six out of the last seven before the break. That's when they found some consistency and then had to take a long pause where they pick up tonight. We will find out. Tim Legler, hang tight. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Yeah, speaking of those landmines in the Western Conference and all the good teams, two of them play tonight, two of the top three teams out West. Clippers travel to Oklahoma City to take on the Thunder. Shea Gilgis Alexander, a monster first half of the season, averaging over 31 points a game. But the Clippers are the trendy team right now to come out West. Look, they're healthy and looking for their sixth straight road win. The Thunder are a half game ahead of the Clippers entering tonight's matchup with the defending champion Denver Nuggets a close four. So that's a look at your chest and tries. It's always leg day when we talk about how good the Western Conference is. And legs, which team do you have more questions about in the second half of the season in the playoffs, the Clippers or the Thunder? I would say the Thunder, and it's primarily because of their age, right? This is a youth movement. This is a bunch of young guys, and they've got great rhythm with that starting five. And, and they've got guys that are playing mature beyond their years, but there's still no collective experience together and winning uh, in the postseason. And so that's what's going to be interesting to watch Oklahoma City. And, you know, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, we know what level player he is, but it's different now when you're talking about getting into potentially a, a seven-game series against a loaded team that's got a lot of talent at the top of their roster when you haven't been through it. I don't have as many questions with the Clippers because I, I feel like what I've seen out of Kawhi Leonard this year – I, I believe that he will be great when the situation requires it. If you want to say there's questions around James Harden, who has had some questionable spots in big playoff moments, that's fair. Paul George as well. But here's the thing. They're in a different lane. They're in that lane now that's alongside that guy, Kawhi Leonard, who has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. If he's healthy, you know how he's going to perform on the biggest stage. So I, I don't have his questions about the Clippers as much as is Oklahoma City – is this youth movement ready to make this leap in one year and make a serious run? Yeah, remember that last youth movement, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, ironically, on the other side of this one. They just couldn't get it done before that team was blown apart. Let's switch gears to Luka Doncic and the Mavericks. They host the Suns tonight. Dallas, they were hot going into the All-Star break. They won six straight. Give me the ceiling for this Dallas team. Uh, ceilings conference finals, I think, and if look, and that really means if you're a conference finalist team, you're potentially a finalist team because now anything could happen in a seven-game series. I just think that the way Kyrie has played uh, since he came back from his injury, and, and, and hopefully he stays back and he stays this locked in and engaged, Luke and Kyrie have found the perfect ebb and flow. It, it, they finally are there, and they went out and they added two significant pieces. Uh, when you add Daniel Gafford, you add P.J. Washington, they upgraded talent in the front court and at the wing and now they're deeper they've got athletes they've got shooters and they've got two of the best offensive players in the league and probably the number one guy when you talk about controlling the game in Luka Doncic I think the Mavs are scary they're hot right now going into the break and they're gonna just have more time to get better with these new pieces I think Dallas legitimately looks like a team that could make a run through the West to the conference finals or beyond. That's their ceiling if everything falls right. And oh, by the way, the Suns, KD, Booker, Beal, <laughs> I mean, they're loaded with this West is going to be so much fun to watch here in the back half of the season. Tim Legler will be here with us on SportsCenter. Thank you, Legs.